Hello everyone, this video is made for the deep learning seminar at the Catholic University of Louvain. In deep learning applied to biomedical imaging, there is a popular problem to develop an algorithm for segmenting images, meaning automatically separating regions of interest. The images can come from an organ, a bone, a tumor, or cells, as you can see on this example. Recently, there was a new model proposed um, based on convolutional networks, and which is called UNET, and which we're going, we're going to present here. Practically speaking, the model takes an, um, an image's input and returns a probabilistic map telling for each pixel the probability to belong to a certain class. There are two main challenges in that problem, which are that the amount of training data is limited due to the nature, and that the different regions in the image are often touching each other which makes the segmentation more difficult. So UNET aims to solve these problems, as we're going to show. Since UNET is a convolutional neural network, it takes an input image that is propagated through the network and through different operations that we'll explain. At the end, the network returns a probabilistic map. On this diagram, the arrows represent the different operations which are mostly convolutions followed by a nonlinear activation function. Each blue box represents a multi-channel feature map for which is its size is written above. In general, convolutions use a padding, um, which means that it extends the image by null pixels on the borders, so that the convolutional kernel can match all the pixels, even the, one on the, the ones on the boundaries. For this model, uh, the authors have chosen to not use these paddings, which means that there's um, a one pixel border lost, and thus the output map is smaller than the input image. That, are, that also allows to process uh, any large images. The, important, uh, the other important operation is max pooling. It consists of downsampling the image and is represented by a downward arrow. This acts on each feature channel separately. It scans the feature map with a 2x2 two two window and reports the maximum activation value to the next feature map as, it, um, as it's indicated in this example. This induces a reduction, uh, a reduction of the feature map size by some factor and increases the number of feature channels with the same factor. And these operations will get, gradually increase the, con the considered features. When we're at the bottom of the U, um, all the features have been extracted and they are mapped to a single value vector. As you may have seen, UNET is composed of a contracting path and an expanding path. Um, the expansion's path goal is to recreate a high resolution probabilistic map with the extracted features. To do so, it gradually applies up convolutions to expand the size of the feature map. An upconvolution consists of mapping each feature vector to a 2x2 two two pixel window with a kernel followed by a nonlinear activation function. In contrast to the contracting path, it increases the size of the feature map with a factor of 2. It also does a concatenation with the corresponding high resolution feature maps coming from the contracting path. These are op operations um, are represented by the long gray arrow. And um, as we said previously, UNET crops away a one pixel border of the original input image since it doesn't use any padding. That is why the output map is smaller than the, output, and the, in, than the input. So maybe you are wondering why uh, the authors did choose to not use paddings. Well, to overcome the problem, they proposed to use mirroring to extrapolate pixels outside of the image. The segmentation of the yellow rectangle uses the data in the blue rectangle, and this technique allows to process any large images. As previously said, two main problems occur in biomedical image segmentation. One is the small amount of data, and the second is uh, touching objects. First, to overcome the lack of data, we use what we call data augmentation. The goal is to artificially increase the amount of data by applying different kinds of trans transformations to the images, such as elastic deformations, symmetric deformations, rotations, etc. Secondly, to overcome the problem of touching objects, each pixel uses its own loss weight. 
the closer a pixel is to a segmented region, the higher weight it gets. This technique allows the model to precisely spot the object's boundaries. And uh, an, illustrated, an illustration of this can be seen on, the, on, the, on this heat map. So, thanks to this algorithm, what previously took researchers hours to segment can now be done in a second by units uh, on a modern GPU.